I met Katie uh, at a party and um, a few and we got together and we became uh, partners and um, then one day she said she was doing Doctor Who at the time and she said um, they're looking for somebody to play this this guy and um, they can't find anybody would you like do you think you it might be good for you and I thought well it's kind of unfair really because um, you know people say oh, it's nepotism <laughs> it's, it's her boyfriend um, but I a bit of pressure and I thought oh okay she said no really they're desperate to find something they can't uh, they can't actually you know, they've been through a lot of people and none of them seem right so would you like to go meet them I said all right well look, I'll meet them and um, we'll, see what, we'll see what happens. And I went to meet them at the BBC and we sat down, we chatted away. And they said, would you like to read some? And, um, you know, usual audition type thing. So I started to read it. And um, his name was Jones. And it was set in South Wales. So uh, naturally I assumed that he was, he was a Welshman. So uh, being a Welshman myself, um, with the name of Llewellyn, which um, I couldn't even spell till I was 15, I have to say, uh, my middle name. And my mother said, no, remember, it's double L E W E double L Y N. Double L E W E double L Y N. Okay, I got it. So that's my middle name, Llewellyn. Llewellyn Bevan. And um, so I started to read this part, and I read it with my Welsh accent that uh, I, I was born with. And um, and they looked at me and said, well, why, why, do you, why are you reading it in a Welsh accent? I said, well, he's Welsh, isn't he? And they said, oh, well, we, we never thought of that. Oh, yeah, I suppose he is, yes. And then he said, look, his name's Jones. He lives in South Wales. Um, and have I got something wrong here? And um, anyway, a few days later, they phoned up and they said, we had a good talk about it and we thought, you might be right. Would you like to do it? And um, of course, yes, I jumped at the chance because it was a wonderful part. And it was great to work with Katie. Uh, and um, in, um, you know, in, in, in the wonderful Doctor Who, and it was uh, a fabulous opportunity that not, not to be turned down. Well, everything. I mean, I. I, I kind of figured out a long time ago that um, it's very easy uh, to wear clothes in uh, plays and films and TV that don't actually look right on you. So I always started wearing my own clothes because um, I thought, well, my, my stuff, I know what suits me. <laughs> and um, so, yes, everything I wore was, um, was mine really uh, that's that's how I used to walk about the streets in those days <laughs> and it wasn't a wig um, <clears throat> it's, it's kind of all disappearing a bit now but uh, you know half a century ago there was plenty of it and um, um, I was um, you know I was quite keen to wear my own because actually I look at it now and I think cool you look a bit of a prat but uh, <laughs> But um, yeah, that's that's kind of how we swung around these days in the early seventies. Oh yeah, it's very cold. <laughs> and we were on uh, we were on these uh, um, in this Welsh um, mine on a, 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 a pit on the slag heaps, and uh, it was quite dodgy, quite dangerous. Everything going off all over the place, and. Um, um, but you know, I, you, you kind of throw yourself into these things, and um, we never considered actually at, at the time. I mean, working with John Pertwee was really marvellous because he he was actually a very serious actor, and uh, of course we all were really. Even though we we laughed about, we played, and we we had a lot of fun, but we took the work very seriously, and. Um, I say that even though Doctor Who was on at 5.30 on a Saturday and it was 
predominantly a uh, kids program. Um, hello, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> um, we we took it as seriously as if it was um, a live sort of play for today. And, um, it was. Um, it was, it was very dramatic, and it was very romantic, and, uh, and very moving. And, of course, all of the questions that were raised in The Green Death are extremely relevant now. The emergence of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, pollution, oil pollution, um, that uh, we're all suffering from, how you feed, how you're going to feed the world in the future, and all of those, all of those issues that were raised in that program are even now, 50 years later, um, incredibly relevant. In fact, they're even more relevant now than they were then, because then it was sort of science fiction in the way we thought, well, you know, these are things that need to be dealt with, but they'll, eat, they'll be dealt with. And here we are, half a century later, and they haven't been dealt with, and it's still going on. And, um, you know, that's a little disappointing, but you know, we um, we made our mark. I say? I, that's a good question. I don't know. Perhaps because it was so unusual, it didn't um, uh, you know it didn't have things coming from other planets or out of space or science fiction in that sense. It had something that was here, very much on Earth, very much to do with what was going on with the planet, with our planet, and um, that, it seemed to me that, um, that perhaps that, that has um, set itself in people's minds in a way, that uh, it's very different from most of the other Doctor Who stories that have been made, I think. And, um, and yes, it was, um, it, was, it, you know, it, was, it was great fun to do. But also, it was a very, um, it was a very serious program, and uh, I think um, that it had some very serious things to say. But um, yes, it was wonderful. I mean, it's extraordinary to me now, all these years later, that people still think that it's that it's um, interesting and good, and that's that's fantastic. It's very nice to be. To be looked after and pampered for a few days, and also, uh, you know, what, what's not to like about being told how wonderful you are by a few thousand people? And uh, you know, suddenly you've got all these friends you didn't know you had. And, uh, it's great. It's I love it. It's From time to time, yes, yes. I I, I don't watch a um, a lot of television, but um, um, I. I quite like to see what, what, what they're doing with it and, um, and uh, ha, ha, how it's transforming because I think it's um, a lot of television is a, is a mirror in a way, to, to that, as Shakespeare said. You know, it's like holding a mirror up to nature and, uh, and television is our mirror. It's, it tells us what, what is happening to to our society, and that um, um, is, um, you know, a very good indicator. And uh, I'm sure that a lot of people, a lot of um, big name actors, who would love to play that part. Actually, I always thought that the um, the best job you could have uh, on television was the guys who did the special effects in those days because there was no CGI it was you, know, you had to you had to do, the only the only effect that they had was what they called um, I think it's called gri uh, blue screen and now it's called green screen for some reason that I don't quite understand they split the color spectrum up and you put them up and, and um, so that's that was the only special effect that they had everything else had to be made there and there and made with their hands. And I can remember these guys, three guys, sitting in the pub, and they'd have a, like beer mats and pens, and they'd go, what about if we took a wire and we put the wire through here, and then we put our hand in there and pulled this, and then the man opened like that, and said, yeah, that's a good idea. And then we'll go and we'll go and get this, and we'll, we'll get that, and we'll get some of that stuff, and we'll that plastic. 
film around it and then do this and that. I was so excited, like schoolboys going, oh, yeah, we can make this, we can do that. And I thought, wow, what a great job for this kind of stuff. And every now and again they go and blow something up. And I thought, oh, this is, that's really terrific, what a wonderful thing. <laughs> It was um, it was it was great, and and you know those the effects. Even though now when you see it, you go, oh yeah, look, you know, oh you, you you can see the outline, and it's obviously you know those were little ones blown up. And, um, I mean, obviously uh, technology changes, but in a way it doesn't detract from the thing itself. I think it um, in, in some. Weird kind of way it, it enhanced it. But yes, yes, yeah, of course, yes, yes, indeed. I mean, that would be immense fun. Uh, we'd have a wonderful time. Um, and uh, um, you know, you could, um, you could actually, and and the fact that those those ideas that were, that were proposed there, in, um, you know, in 1972. Uh, you know, still haven't been answered. The question is still there, and um, yeah, it would be great. It'd be great to uh, to um, do something that um, makes people aware of what's going on uh, in, in in places in, in the world. And um, yeah, sure, of course, I'd love to. Do it. I'd love to. Do it. Um, it's it's um, it's one of those things that everybody would love to do. Yes. And I'm no exception. I would love to. Yeah.